Well, as promised, we have an extremely special guest, and I want to set the stage just a little bit. We as the body of Christ, we as the church, have been commanded, really by the Lord, to bless Israel. Amen? Amen. 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 In fact, part of God's covenant with Abraham was, I will bless those who bless thee, and I will curse those who curse thee. So, I like being blessed. We, we love our heritage that we have because of the nation Israel, and in fact, we are indebted for the sacred scriptures, Jesus, our Savior, the Jewish carpenter from Nazareth, amen? So our heritage is deep, it is rich. Our heritage as a nation is founded on Judeo-Christian values, amen? Emphasis on Judeo. In fact, our whole system of laws really is conceived uh, from the understanding that there is a God, and that God is the one who governs all men. And in fact, the preamble to our Declaration of Independence declares that these truths are self-evident, that all men are created equal, amen? And so we have the special privilege of having with us uh, this morning Sam Grundwig, uh, Grundwig, excuse me, he he is the Council General of Israel, uh, stationed here in Los Angeles, appointed by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, last year. So would you stand and welcome... Uh, Sam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom and good morning. I'm so excited to be here. I mentioned to the pastor, I, it's my first time here, and I can really feel the energy and the love in, in, in the hall in this house of worship, and I'm so excited. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> Senior Pastor Jeff, thank you for your dedication to this blessed congregation. Your leadership is an inspiration to all of us, and it's greatly appreciated, and thank you for hosting me this morning. (laughs) Pastor Greg Denham, thank you for your friendship and for helping facilitate our participation. It's such a special event. (laughs) You know, I look around the room, and I see the different faces They represent the beauty, the diversity of our brothers and sisters in the Christian community. And I want to begin by saying to each of you, thank you. Thank you for your support of Israel. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your love and solidarity. We can feel it all the way in Jerusalem. All the way in Jerusalem. (laughs) Jerusalem, the undivided, eternal capital of the state of Israel, and the spiritual capital of the world. I just returned from Jerusalem a few days ago. I'm still jet lagged. And we appreciate each and every one of you for being here this morning and for always being there for Israel. As you know, the people of Israel, after some thousands of years of wandering, We've returned to the land promised by God to our ancestors. The survival of the Jewish people is no less than a miracle of God. The return of the Jewish people to the land promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is a miracle of God. And so too, the establishment of the modern state of Israel in 1948 is a miracle of God. The state of Israel, American Jews, and the Christian community have shared a unique relationship for many years. Christians and Jews understand one another 
and have a unique bond. There's an understanding that is based on shared experiences, shared values, common hardship, and overcoming adversity. Many sacred texts emphasize Jewish stories from our Bible, stories of Joseph being delivered from impossible odds, stories of Moses setting his people free from slavery with God's help and wisdom, and stories of Joshua bringing down walls that sought to divide and to separate. Our stories, our Bible, our heritage is the same, and as such, so is our history and our destiny. My friends, today more than ever, we need our Christian friends to stand united with Israel. And today more than ever, Israel continues to stand united with our Christian brothers and sisters. These are challenging times for all of us, for Israel and for its supporters around the world, especially in the chaotic Middle East. Syria is an inconceivable war zone. More than 500,000 people have been killed over the last five years. Iraq is in no better shape with sectarian violence, which continues to cause destruction, mayhem, and death. And Iran continues to be the main threat to the region and to the world with aspirations of nuclear capability and state-sponsored terrorism with its proxies. And as you're all aware, much of the persecution that has been directed towards the once flourishing Christian communities in the region. As the situation in the Middle East continues to deteriorate, life for Christians has become unbearable. Just a century ago, 20% of the region's population was Christian, 20%. Today, Christians account for less than 4% of the population. And as the forces of ISIS and other radical militant Islamic groups sweep across the region, ancient Christian communities are becoming virtually extinct. But in the midst of all this chaos, violence, and brutality, shines one ray of light, one beacon of hope, the state of Israel. Israel is the only place in the entire Middle East where the Christian population is actually growing with a thriving Christian community five times, five times what it was in 1948 when the modern state of Israel was born. Even as Israel is a light unto the nations in the triumph of goodness over evil, light over darkness, truth over lies, it is critical for Jews and Christians to stand together as one against the voices of tyranny. As the prophet Isaiah said, for Zion's sake we cannot be silent. Leman Sion lo eshkot. The Christian partnership with the Jewish people is rooted in a common foundation of faith and we are united in our identity as children of the God of Israel. Our friendship and fellowship speaks to a sense of shared values, shared history, in belief, in faith, in the Almighty as a basic hope in a better tomorrow. And Israel will continue to stand up proudly for Christians in the Middle East, just as Christians continue to proud, stand up proudly for Israel and here in the United States as you do. My friends, make no mistake about it. Christians and Jews face the same threats from the same evil perpetrators. We need to stand together to put an end to the persecution, an end to the persecution of our brothers and sisters around the world. You know, today is the Jewish holiday of Purim. 2,500 years ago today, we mark that there was an evil regime in ancient Persia, which is today Iran. They threatened to destroy the Jewish people because there was an evil man named Haman who convinced the king to pass a decree to destroy and annihilate the Jewish people. You know, even the name Purim is symbolic. It means lottery or lot because it's symbolic of a flawed ideology or a lack thereof of this evil Haman. 
because the lotter lottery was what he used to determine the, ta the date and the day in which to carry out this decree. And it's symbolic because it's the idea that in his view and in that view, there is no divine providence. There is no hand of God in the world, according to that ideology. Everything is by chance and happenstance, which of course is the very opposite of what we all believe. And the name Esther, it's the book of Esther, the story of Esther, of course she's one of the main characters of the story. That name, that word also means being hidden, because we know that throughout the book of Esther, the, the mention of the name of God did not appear, and the miracles were not necessarily obvious divine miracles, and they could have been explained by chance or by human behavior or actions. But you have to look closely, and that's one of the main messages of Purim, is that we have to look closely to realize and understand, as we all do, that there is divine providence in the world. And there is the hand of God in the world. And we must strive to see God's hand in everything, every day, even when there is darkness and when things look bleak, as they do sometimes today. And so, 2,500 years ago, this regime in ancient Persia, modern-day Iran, threatened to destroy the Jewish people. Sound familiar? Today, there is a regime in Iran that time after time has stated clearly and has even written so on its missiles that they test, death to Israel, that they're going to wipe us off the map. So one might say, nothing has changed. 2,500 years. But you know what? Everything has changed. Because today we have a state of Israel, and today we have you, our Christian friends. You know, the most, for me, the most dramatic moment in the story of Purim and in the book of Esther, and I think it could not be more relevant today and right now, and it, and it really resonates. As you'll all recall with me, Esther became a queen, right? She became, in the story, uh, to be in a position of influence. And she had an opportunity when this decree was still in force. She had an opportunity to go and speak to the king and try and get him to overturn and nullify this decree. But she hesitated. She was nervous. She was afraid. And there's a moment in the story, which I have to tell you, every time we read the story, and we read it twice every year. I, read, I was in synagogue last night and this morning early, very early. And I have to tell you, whenever I get to these words in the text, I get goosebumps because this lesson can't be more relevant for me and for all of us today. And so Esther is hesitant about using her position that she, she so miraculously rose up to the position of queen but she's afraid to go and approach the king. And Mordechai, who is her mentor, according to some, her uncle, says to her something unbelievable. And I'll tell you in Hebrew, and then I'll tell you in English. He says, Im ba'et azot, If you keep quiet, Esther, if you remain silent and don't act, you should know deliverance and salvation and relief for the Jews will arise from some other place. It's going to happen with or without you. And who knows if perhaps you were made queen for just such time as this. In other words, the whole miracle of the story that you went through to become in this position, it will have been for nothing. In other words, Israel will be delivered regardless, but it may as well be you to support her. Fulfill your destiny. That is why God put you in this position. Don't waste it, because the outcome will be the same. The outcome will be the same for Israel and the Jewish people. And for all of you here today, I say thank you, because you have not remained silent. You heeded the word that Mordechai said to Esther. It may as well be you, because the deliverance and relief will come in any event. So. 
I again want to thank you for having me here this morning, and thank you for your support for Israel. God bless you. Amen. Amen. There's exactly one democracy in the Middle East. It's Israel. The Jewish people make up two-tenths of one percent of the entire world's population. Yet they account for 22 percent of all the world's Nobel, Nobel laureates. Things that you might think about every day like your cell phone invented by the Jewish people. Theory of relativity thought up by a Jewish man. Uh, if you don't have polio today, which would be all of you, Jonas Salk, we owe a debt of gratitude to the Jewish people, and we must stand with Israel. Thank you. Thank you. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you for, for Sam. We thank you, God, that you have appointed him for such a time as this. And God, we ask for the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, we pray that prayer that the psalmist David wrote as a prayer of ascent. And we ask God that there would be peace within our borders. We pray that you would lay low those that would come against. Uh, God, we ask for great wisdom, Lord, for Prime Minister Netanyahu, for our brother Sam. We pray that you would anoint him as he gives counsel. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would take those who are in the Knesset, even now, Lord, and, and perhaps they're thinking wrongly, change their minds. God, change the, the course of history. We know in the last days uh, that Israel will stand, and Lord, we stand with her and with our, our brothers and sisters. And so we pray for the peace of Jerusalem to fall. We ask these things in the name that is above every name, Yahushua, Lord, our God who is salvation. Bless Israel in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.